it, I don't need karate. I, I can earn a lot of money. I can enjoy my life. I can party, do all the bad stuff. And subhanAllah, I almost quit sports because wow, of that. Yeah. Ten of us did the same tattoo on the same place. And we paid a lot of money for that. And one day, the shaitan put the idea in our heads. So let's go and let's do the tattoo. Yeah. We, we wanted to do the, the chemical. Uh, there's the people who paid in advance. I returned their money, say them sorry, I cannot do that. I I national team and after that one week I torn my left ACL first yeah, of all the girl that was tattooing told us that it will be primary that will not stay permanent yeah uh, but it stayed until now it didn't fade so, away so now so now you made you went into the tattoo business now you started yeah to, it's yeah it, you made it a was like fun it was something that we wanted to do on ourselves but in couple of weeks it started to, to be a big business the people are coming and paying me to do the tattoos nice. the one of the best soldiers of shaitan is the one who said do it later yeah you know so subhanallah don't wait don't wait one second trust just like the rent a car you can't start like you know tinting it out how you want you know putting graffiti on it and stuff yeah <laughs> what about our body you know what I mean? assalamu alaikum guys how you doing greens of peace in Bosnia, and I'm with the person who's known as the Bruce Lee from the Balkans. I'm so excited when I see young brothers who are practicing the Dean, and they're they've been exposed to all of the temptations of the dunya. They had the dunya, but now they're giving it up for something even greater. Get ready to meet my brother Maris Muhovic here on the D Show. Don't go anywhere. Brother, how you doing? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, brother. Alhamdulillah. So, so they give you the the nickname, the Bruce Lee of the Balkans. Mm, I will. I wanted to change it a little bit. Yeah. Like the bearded Bruce Lee, maybe something like oh, that. Oh, that's cool. Sounds, sounds cool. The bearded Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been uh, you've been involved now. Um, you're well established, world champion in in karate. And tell us some some of uh, your background in the in this in this martial art of uh, Shotokan karate. Shotokan karate. T tell yes. us a little bit about what you do and uh, your accomplishments in the karate field er, arena. I'm uh, now the four time in the row uh, the best sports athlete in the Sarajevo city. I was two time the best athlete in the Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm basically doing karate for all of my life from the childhood till now I have more than 300 medals maybe more than 400 I cannot remember the younger ones but the ones that are important are in the seniors when I started to compete uh, over 80 years 18 years older uh, I win the two European medals individually in 2014 and 2016 one was bronze and the other one was silver uh, I was the World Cup champion 2016 uh, also I win the three or four more with the team we was uh, 2013 uh, European champion for the cities we was second on the European Championship with the team so Basically, the 
those are the biggest achieve yeah. achievements. Also the Premier Leagues and the rankings. Last year I was in top 10 in my category in the world with the rankings. And the competition for the uh, points in ranking there, World Cup, World Cup uh, competitions and only 64 competitors from the world can enter it and compete mm -hmm. on that those competitions. So, alhamdulillah. So I, I think it's common. Usually you're an athlete now and you're in the best shape of your life. You're feeling great. You're accomplishing so much. Now there's another side to that. You know, doors start opening up. Young man, he starts wanting young women. Uh, he starts get to get in, invited to certain events, right? Sometimes even training gets compromised. Uh, a person's ego gets very big, right? Uh, money gets put on the table. Just the, a whole new world opens up. You kind of got also pulled into that a little bit. And alhamdulillah, you got out of that. But what was the transition like from being also in that arena now? And now also those temptations, you know, uh, pulling you in, luring you in. And then coming to overcoming that and being where you are today here on the Dean Show. SubhanAllah, it's, it's a little bit uh, hard to think about those days in Jahiliya. But it's just, you know, when you're young and I don't want to say famous but well known in your city and when you started to do all the bad stuff back in the days we thought it was good and it was enjoyable and it was cool so I did to do all the stuff that young people does except the drugs of course because of the sports didn't let me to do that uh, I party a lot, um, I drink a lot, especially off season when I didn't have competitions or after the certain event when I win it. Is that, is that, is that something that, that was common? Like yeah, you, it's like, normal, it's, it's common, no, it's, yeah. If you don't do it, you're like, not cool. You're, you're not, not cool. Yeah, and you're so, not that guy. So even if you're like the one guy that's kind of like, you know, trying to be, because I would imagine you come in and you're like, hold on, I got to stay focused, my training, but not everyone else is drinking. Do you get, because of the peer pressure, the pressure, you just succumb to that and you start also, you know, because of the friends, bad company, you get sucked into it? I wouldn't say bad company, just the, com the company that was... The shaitan did his stuff, you know. Yeah. He, he just invited us and we accepted it. Oh. And all of us, I had one, one group of friends, the team Adrenaline, we was doing the extreme sports and the, all the, the, the adrenaline sports from parkour, free run, bungee jumping, cliff diving, you, you name it, we, we did it. And one day the shaitan put the idea in our heads, so let's go and let's do the tattoo. Yeah. We, we wanted to do the, the chemical uh, formula of the adrenaline like the little age and o's you know the chemical t stuff and we did and the 10 of us did the same tattoo on the same place and we paid a lot money for that and when we get back home uh, first of all the girl that was tattooing told us that it will be primary that will not stay permanent yeah uh, but it stayed until now it didn't fade away and they told me Marys, what do you think about it to do tattoos for us and on us and on yourself as well? And I was like, okay, uh, I did a lot of artwork when I was younger in primary school, in high school with the, with the hip hop culture, the graffiti started and I was a little bit into it and I, I like to write and uh, everything that has to do with art. So I accepted it, why not? We ordered it, waited a couple days to, to get the shipment from the eBay and we just started. You made it into a, so now, so now you made, you went into the tattoo business now. You started yeah, to, it's, yeah, it, you made it, it a business. It was like fun. It was something that we wanted to do on ourselves. But in a couple of weeks, it started to, to be a big business. The people are coming and paying me to do the tattoos. Wow. And it took maybe almost three years. 
And you can imagine uh, in three years how much tattoos that I did, subhanAllah. But now, but now, but now, one thing that we learned is that there's no such thing because you thought that this would disappear after three to five years. That's what you were told. Yeah. So that wasn't true. No, it's not. It was so a you lie. Got, you, yeah. you're going to le learn a lesson here, huh? Yeah, a I big lesson. I, I often look, I often make an example. When you, when you rent a car, right? This vehicle, this blessing that the Creator has given us, I mean, we are responsible for it. It's an imana and a trust. Just like the rent-a-car, you can't start, like, you know, tinting it out how you want, you know, putting graffiti on it and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what about our body, you know what I mean? That gift that so, the Creator has given to us. So, th but, but the thing is, when you don't have that moral compass, the, the blueprint for life, then everything's open, right? For experimentation and try out this, try out that. It's, it's just, imagine uh, in Bosnia, uh, maybe 20 year old guy who is earning maybe 200 euros a day yeah with the haram business but back in the days i was not thinking about it as i'm thinking it now so uh, alhamdulillah thanks god for the for the straight path yes and i was learning a lot of money uh even in one point i went i was thinking okay i'm doing karate uh when I win the medal, I get a, a little like award from the government or from the city. But that's that's it cannot cover even the supplements that I'm that I'm, that I'm uh, drinking do, do, during the training season. So I was thinking, why should I do karate? I'm earning here money. It, I don't need karate. I, I can earn a lot of money. I can enjoy my life. I can party, do all the bad stuff. And subhanAllah, I almost quit sports because wow. of that. Oh, yeah, so almost quit. You, you went really deep into yeah. you know, exploring and following uh, one's lusts, passions and desires that yes. you almost even gave up the career, a successful yes. career yes, in, in, in uh, karate, huh? And in all of that, uh, in 2014, after winning the first European medal on my first European championship because, because of the political situation in the National Federation, I was not giving a chance until from 18 until 22nd year the fourth year i was doing it like for fun i didn't have chance to compete for the national team and when the first time gave me the chance i win the the, the medal and subhanallah the a lot of athletes are waiting the whole life to win that that medal and to retire yeah. so i win it on the my first competition uh, for the senior national team and after that one week i torn my left ACL, I, I, I injured my knee uh, hardly. I went to the surgery and have the seven seven month recovery. And after that, in that period, the, the whole business were, were, you know, I had a lot of free time. I was not training two times because of the injury. So the business grew up. I even started to uh, employ people in my studio because I could not do it all all uh, by myself. So it was becoming very successful, yeah, your, your tattoo parlor, yeah, as we call it. Yeah. So, in 2016, uh, Allah gave me the baraka in the karate. And, uh, after the injury and after the recovery, after I returned to the competitions, I was given a chance one more time and I win the second year Olympic medal and that was the day when I, uh, no, not Olympics, Allah. Inshallah I will win the Olympic one, the European medal. And that was the, the day that I said to myself, that's it, no more haram business for you. From this day, Inshallah, you will start to change yourself. So you got out now, you left it. Yeah, you left I, had, it. I had the one month appointment in front from the people and there's the people who paid in advance. I return their money, say them sorry, I cannot do that. I, I just quit it. Mm -hmm. I, I gave up from that. The, all the equipment that I had, I sold. After I figured out that I should not sold it, but subhanallah, it's the, it, I was really limited with the, with the knowledge of the, of the dean. So I gave up from everything and I read somewhere when if when you left go something in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will replace it with something better and it just happened it happened to me in a couple of months um, 
I started to uh, work as a trainer in the club. I get the three or four groups that I'm uh, training the kids. After a couple months, I get the Olympic scholarship. Uh, half year later, I was invited to go to the Olympic program in Tokyo, the Special Olympic program to prepare for the Olympics. So, subhanAllah, Allah, Allah replaced it with something much, much better. So you saw me. this actually come to a reality now. Yeah. This actually happened. You left something for your creator. You started to live a morally upright life. Yes. You connected with the one who created you, living Islam. So now, what do you tell your friends who say, no, nah, we can't give up, you know, the dating of girls. We can't give up, you know, the partying, the drinking. It's not possible. You're a living example now that it is. No? SubhanAllah, it's possible. Uh, it's just the, the way how, how I started to, to practice the religion. Uh, you know, the people start to pray and then quit, you know, the, the, the sins, the, the big sins. They stopped drinking or something. I first stopped to do everything that is bad. I first stopped tattooing, then stopped drinking alcohol and partying, then stopped dating girls. Uh, then all the sins when I felt that I'm a little bit purified I started with the, the five salah alhamdulillah from the day when I started until now uh, I didn't miss one and I feel great and I'm so much uh, not say better person but I'm patient I was never a bad person, like evil person or, or thinking somebody bad or do something bad. Just dunya is not my priority. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing myself for the Ahira and Alhamdulillah. It's, it's from the day on, every day, learning as much as I can. You know, I, I started to, to, to learn Arabic, uh, Arabic letters, the Sufara in year back so it didn't took me long yeah. you know it's like Allah, Allah gave better in everything that's sure. that's good that's that's amazing to see and like when we talk about give up drinking I mean you got hundreds of drink you want protein shakes go ahead you want a nice smoothie go ahead vegetable juice go ahead I'd recommend staying away from the soda pods because you know uh, <laughs> uh, health reasons but alcohol I mean you know, every 10 seconds, someone is dying from alcohol consumption. So you give up that. We talked about uh, women. I mean, come on, man. This is a protection from women because what are boy on the uh, what are the minds of men? Just to use and abuse women. Is that right? You know, so yes, Islam. So, so now, what is it? Now you. And those you, are somebody's daughters so and sisters, and yeah. Yeah. So now you marry them, right? So now you're committed to marrying a woman and living a morally upright life. And that's all based on the pure monotheism, on the worship of the creator, not the creation. And now that feeling that you had then, you talked about you were restless, anxiety. And now you were talking about what? You have some of this, this sakina, this peace. Talk about that before we conclude. It's just uh, my friends know me as very, very tempt person, you know. I react hard and it's just, I'm, I was explosion. I get angry easily. Uh, in that anger, I say bad stuff, do bad stuff. And from time to time, harm somebody, you know, because of the knowledge of the, the martial arts that, that, that I learned. Alhamdulillah, from the day that everything changed and it's just, I'm living the better life, the calm life. I'm a much, uh, how do I say? Uh, it's just sabr, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm more patient. Yeah, more patient. I, I, I put things, I s slept one day and then do something think about it and then do and then react I don't react immediately uh, everything that comes to me I think about it first and then do it yeah. before I do it and think about it later yeah. and also of course regret it so alhamdulillah it's, it's just the thing that it cannot be explained with the yeah. words the feeling that I'm feeling right now and 
it's just the feeling that I want to feel the, the rest of my life and inshallah die as a Muslim and go to the Jannah and that's our primary goal it must be our primary goal to prepare for the Ahira and I mean what what's the pur purpose of the living if if it's not that that it, yeah. that's deep I mean because all of us at any moment you have people who are in the best shape of their lives and they just drop dead car accident plane accident you know uh, heart stops but if you just live for this transitory life even people who are just out there you know at that young age even old people still in the club right the short term moments of some kind of uh, experience of you know it's like waiting 45 minutes an hour for that amusement ride for the roller coaster but then what you enjoy for 30 seconds but you, you're still depressed yeah you forget about it for a little yeah. bit so you're at the nightclub you're hanging out drinking and just life is ticking going by but you haven't figured out the purpose of life you figured out the purpose of life you're another testimony example that when you transition from living according to your nafs your desires unhappiness restlessness then transforming your life and now living a morally upright life according to the verbatim word of God the Quran and the Sunnah now you have that sakina, that tranquility that peace it's a jihad it's a struggle obviously right it's not just you know a piece of cake but now you have clarity in life because you're living purpose what advice do you have final closing comments your your success story someone who's at the pinnacle now inshallah God willing you, you go to Olympics and win that gold so, medal and there's other people who are kind of you, people who you've left behind, but you obviously want good for them. You have, we have love for all of mankind. What advice do you have for those people out there who are struggling against their nafs, their desires, man and woman, you know, and they see you as a role model? What do you say? It's just it, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the people, they're waiting for their, their you know, um, How do I say? Uh, they're waiting for the uh, to get old, you know, to start to practicing Islam. How do you know that you will get old? How do you know that you, as you told, the people are dying in, the, in their best 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 life years or best shapes of their lives? The one of the best soldiers of Shaitan is the one who said, "Do it later." Yeah. You know. So Subhanallah, don't wait. Don't wait one second. If you can do it now, go to masjid, do the wudu, pray, just do it. Just do it. It's, I see a lot of people, a lot of my friends, and all of them say, I have a plan, inshallah I will do it. Next year, next Ramadan, after Ramadan, everything goes the same. I was like that, you know. Every Ramadan, we fast, we pray as much as we can. As the first day of day it starts, we go to night club. Right and what back. we do? One month of pray, we drink with the, we drink alcohol and party for the what for what? Why you are partying for the one month that you? Sacrifice yourself for the Lord. Subhanallah. No, Subhanallah. Don't wait for Ramadan. Don't wait for the. Don't wait one second. Just do it. Just that, do it. That, 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 that's my advice. And inshallah, in little of time, you will see that that's the that's the one thing, and that's the thing that it's good for you. Alhamdulillah. Thank Alhamdulillah. you. Thank you for uh, sharing that. We're here in Bosnia with the. Uh, the new uh, bearded Bruce Lee. How's that one? Alhamdulillah, it's good. <laughs> the bearded I, I Bruce like, Lee. I like, you I like, like it most. Yeah. All right. Better. Keep tuning in. Take the advice. Learn, grow, and you'll get clarity in life when you live in the purpose of life and seek to know it from the creator of life. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.